I'm Lori from Be In My Bonnet and I'm going to talk to you today about embroidery. I designed this Stitchy Fun sampler and it has uh, six of my favorite embroidery stitches on there. That I've been teaching embroidery for a long time and these are my six favorite. These are the six that I learned when I was a little girl and they're still my favorite and that's what this sampler consists of. Okay so while I've got my green thread in we're going to flip over here to this next panel and do a French knot. When you're doing a French knot, you don't, do not want to come up right in the center of the French knot, but just kind of off to the side into the French knot just a little teeny bit. And the reason for that is you're going to go back down in it and you do not want to go back into the same hole that you came up with your French knot or you're going to probably pull it right through the back of your fabric. When you go back in, you're going to go next to it. So that's why you kind of want to come in one side and you're going to go back into the other side just a little bit. So what you're going to do with the French knot is you're going to come up and you have your needle up towards you. You hold the thread here probably about an inch away or an inch and a half from where you came up and you're going to put your needle facing this way. Okay, not this way but this way so that you're making a loop. So your needle's going to be down here and you're going to wrap around three times or two times, however many times you want to do it. Now see those on my needle I've wrapped three times, those French knots. This is where you're going to go back in to your French knot, not where you came up, but next to it so that you've got those threads to protect you from having your knot go back in. Now you're at this point, you've got to pull your thread so that it's tight right down to how you want that French knot to look. If you haven't got your thread pulled tight and it looks like this before you put your needle back through, it's, it's going to be a loose and wobbly French knot. So you want it tight and in just exactly how you want it and then I hold it so that it stays tight till I pull my needle through and then I put my thumb right on top of it till it's all the way through. And I've got a perfect little French knot going like this and it's going to stay in. It's not going to pull out from the back because I haven't gone down through the same hole that I came up. Now this on the sampler I did not knot off obviously through each French knot. I just came to the next one, came up to the side. I'll do it a little bit faster just to show you my thread down, my needles going down, I wrap around three times and then go back in, not where you came up, but next to it. Pull it tight, hold it down, pull it through, put my thumb on top until I've pulled it through. Now if you wrap it the same amount around each time, then you'll get the same size French knots if you use the same tension. That just comes with experience and you'll get that. You just use the same amount of tension, the same amount of wraps, and your French knots will end up looking pretty even. If you get a knot while you're doing a French knot, I usually just snip it off and start all over. It's kind of hard to fix a knot. This is what I've used to, in my lettering also, to, you know, dot eyes and things like that. This is how I make my commas. I'll just make a French knot and then just embroider a little stitch next to it coming out. So if, just make sure that your knot's tight down in there before you pull your needle through so that it won't be wobbly. So there's my French knots and see how they're tight to the fabric and there's not a little tail on them. That's what you want. Now when you're knotting off a French knot, you can see that I have these little tails. I'll just go right in between the fabric to make my loops so that I can knot off. Then we'll move on to the next stitch. So here we have the Lazy Daisy stitch. 
And I want to show you two ways that I mark it. You can either trace the actual daisy, or a lot of times, this looks a little confusing, but see, this is my center right here. I've traced that on. But I just put a dot at the beginning of the stitch and the end of the lazy daisy stitch. So this right here is what this is. That makes it easier to cover your stitch. I think you'll, you'll see why when I show you how to make it. Okay, so the lazy daisy stitch, you want to come in on the bottom of the petal. So you come up and all you're going to do is make this loop. So you're going to go back in at the bottom, but not in the same hole, just right next to it. Not in the same hole, and you're going to bring your needle up right underneath there, where that loop is, on the inside, underneath. And you're just making a loop, and you pull it until it covers that line, but you don't, it's the thing about Lazy Daisy, you don't want to pull it real tight, or it just, you know, it just kind of sinks into your fabric and doesn't look nice. So you just kind of have to learn how that tension where you just kind of barely pop it maybe with your pinky until it's pulled and that's tight enough. Now when you go back down to secure your stitch you do not want to go back in the same hole that you came up. You would just want to make kind of go above your marked line just a little bit and you don't want to pull that too tight. If you feel like sometimes it's too tight you can take your needle and loosen it up until it's a nice petal. But see, it's kind of hard to cover those lines, as you can see. Or you can use a mechanical pencil, uh, 0.5, like I do sometimes for a real thin line instead of a marker on these, just so that they're easy to cover. Because this stitch can lift easily, and I don't like to see those permanent lines. So that's a lot why I do just the dots, so that I know that will be covered. Now I just continue on around the circle of the flower. Just come the bottom, come up from the bottom, go in next to it, not in the same hole. My needle comes up right under that line of the loop. Pull my needle up so that that, pull that and go back down in. Just a little above your marked line. Oh. Got a knot here. There we go. And there you have your flower. And then once again, you just find some thread that you can kind of go behind, make a loop, put your needle through, pull it up. I'm going to tie another knot. I'm going to show you how I make the Lazy Daisy with it just marked like this. Then you can decide how you want to mark yours. So this is my center hole, so I'm going to ignore that. But this is these two right here. You can see my needle is going to be one petal. So I come in this bottom hole and then go back down next to it. Come up just underneath the hole. Make my loop. And do my little stitch. To me it's a little bit easier to cover those lines. Okay, so now we're gonna do these long stitches right here. Long stitch is pretty much just what it says. You just make one long stitch from the beginning of the line to the end. So I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna start over here so that I can work my way to the left. So what I do with the long stitch is I come up one line, go down the other. And I'm just gonna work my way across this set of three lines going this way. Come up one end of the line, go down the other, and just travel across to the closest point. 
And you can work your way across this row pretty quickly by doing a long stitch. With the long stitch, you want to make sure that you pull tight enough. Again, you know, tension is something that's just learned. You don't want to pull so tight that you can see the holes in the fabric, but you want to pull tight enough, especially with this long of a stitch. This is probably about as long of a stitch as I would make. You know, you don't want great big gaps like that. You don't want it to be loose, so you just kind of have to pull it to where it just lays across the fabric nicely but doesn't pull too tightly. And you're just holding your frame and you're working on top of your frame. Your needle, your work is always above. You don't need to turn your hoop or your frame over and over again, back and forth. Just keep your work on top where you can see it and control. Okay, so now I've got some navy blue thread, and like on the sampler, I did this little zigzag right here, and you work this doing the long stitch. Once again, it's just in a different formation than this, but you just come up one end, go in, down the other. Now you want to come, come up one end over here and go down in to where you came up. Your stitches are a little bit neater if you work it that way rather than trying to come up in the hole that you went down in. It's much better if you come up and go down into the hole. You let your needle do the work that way. If you keep trying to come up this way, you can't really see what's going on. It's hard to see those threads and it kind of pulls the thread a little bit different. So it's nicer to come up and go down right in the hole. And you just work your way across. Once again, I'm holding my finger on the back of my thread when it's on the back of my work. And then I'll hold it on the top if I feel like I'm worried about it being knotted as it's going down in so that you can keep working along smoothly. I've got some pink floss, three strands, and I'm just going to show you I, that I did use the long stitch to also do the stitches across the sampler. And once again, I just did that, started in from the beginning and in from the end. This is where I like a little bit of tension, or a little bit loose, so I can loosen it up a little bit on my hoop because I like to have my background just a little bit looser so that I can come through and load up one stitch. I don't really, it's not like hand quilting. I don't want to load it up on my needle several stitches at a time, but I just want to come up on the beginning of the next stitch with a long stitch. With this running stitch across here, it kind of saves a little bit of time when you do that. So I just have my finger back here so I can feel the tip of the needle when it comes through, and I just stitch across like that with my running stitch when I get to the end. I can just knot off. Okay, so here I'm gonna show you how I did the X on my sampler with the long stitch. I'm just gonna do one and show you how I did. I'm gonna, I started here, but I did not do a long stitch all the way across here and all the way across here. I went to the center and then I just went out on this corner and went in to the center and I worked my way around. So it's still an X, but it's not a long stitch. I felt it was too long with that cross in the middle that the threads would maybe come a little bit loose and not look nice. So that's what I did, and I just traveled across, and that's how you do your Xs on the sampler.